Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Did you know that some kata have extremely different iterations? In Wadaru there is a kata by the name of Rohai. Now Rohai means heron. And right there is the first oddity in this weird phenomenon that exists within the martial art known as karate. You see, karate, or rather toady, was highly influenced by a Chinese martial art based on the movements of the white crane, aptly named Fujian White Crane Kung Fu. The problem was, when the Okinawans started implementing the moves of this art, they would compare them to those of a bird that wasn't indigenous to Okinawa. Now, a few friends of mine uh, pointed out that ornithology wasn't top of mind of the old karate masters. Which is why you could easily find kata names referring to white cranes mixed with names referring to the heron. Now when you think about it, this isn't too far-fetched. I mean, look at these images. See, this is a heron and this is a white crane. I'm, I mean, uh, this is a heron and this is a white crane. Let's quickly learn to identify both. The neck is a dead giveaway. A heron has a more pronounced, almost snake-like neck where the neck of a crane is shorter and straighter. This is evident when they fly. See, the crane flies with the neck outstretched, whereas the heron flies with its neck retracted. The beak of the crane is also shorter than that of the heron. Of course, that is just a minor detail when you see the plethora of different versions there exist of the Kada Rohai. Let's name a few. There is Matsumura Rohai and Tomari Rohai, which are maybe, maybe most famously practiced in Shitoryu and Matsubayashi Ryu. Let's watch Matsumura Roi and let's not lose ourselves into which version it is and just enjoy the performance. There will be more to come. Then, let's say in the late 1800s, Itosu was working on his own rohai, when a young Funakoshi came and studied under the legendary master. He reworked Itosu's rohai and named it Meikyo, meaning bright mirror. No reference to the birds. When we look at Meikyo, we can easily point out the differences. But look closely, can you spot the similarities?
After many years, the young Japanese Otsuka got to study under Itosu as well. He was taught Rohai too, but by this time Itosu had developed three Rohai Kara named Rohai Shodan, Nidan and Sandan. Which is logical of course. Not only would Itosu's understanding of the moves have evolved, the man himself would be decades older than when Funakoshi studied with him. This could, and did, result in vastly different Kara. Right now, these are still taught under the names Itosu no Rohai Shodan, Nidan and Sandan. Otsuka learned all, but only the first of Itosu's Rohai Kara made it into the Wado curriculum. Let's look at it as it's done by Otsuka himself, and by myself. I mean, it is my channel after all. Finally, we have to address the fact that kata have a tendency to migrate, and even though Tang Sudo and Taekwondo do not come from Japan, one could be forgiven if you call them Korean Karate, as they train their versions of quintessential Karate Kata. And a few days ago, I was happily surprised to see this Kata being performed by Daniel Marino. I can only say one thing, long live diversity in karate, let that which divides us unite us. As for the applications, as you know by now, they will come eventually. So how about you? Do you practice Rohai or Mekyo? Which version do you practice? Which one do you like best? Leave a comment below or even a video of you performing it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day, and as always, thanks for watching.